Are you an established small business owner or aspiring entrepreneur? Would you like professional advice to help your business grow and succeed? Well, look no further. The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center is the territory's number one resource to move your business forward. Enjoy no-cost advising, low-cost training, and technical assistance from experts in both the public and private sectors. The VISBDC is nationally accredited and sustained by the University of the Virgin Islands and the U.S. Small Business Administration. Visit us at our locations on St. Thomas, St. John, or St. Croix, and follow us on social media at VISBDC. For easy access to all our training and networking events, be sure to join our newsletter and download the VISBDC app. The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center, here to help your business start, grow, and succeed. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the VISBDC Cybersecurity Awareness Series. Today's webinar is entitled Phishing and Email Threat Awareness. Today, pretty much from your homes to your jobs, whenever you travel, that you are at some point at risk for any type of cybersecurity attack or intrusion. Uh, technology is all around us and the devices we use every day, uh, mobile devices, uh, your computers, uh, anything that you interact with that is connected to a network. Uh, these things are all viable to attacks from the cyber uh, vector. So uh, we would like to have everyone to be aware of all the possibilities of the threats and attacks that may rely upon you to make a difference in preventing something from happening. All right. Okay, uh, so when discussing small businesses in terms of the cybersecurity landscape, um, it is very important to know that you have a vital role in protecting your business. Um, because, you know, as a small business, you know, your focus may be, you know, amongst other things that are prioritized, such as, you know, product, uh, establishing your brand, uh, stakeholders, and whatnot. But, you know, for some, their priority may not be, you know, I need to have a secure, um, secure business in terms of the digital aspect of protecting your data. That may fall to the wayside, you know, when you're first branding yourself. Um, but as far as hackers and, you know, cyber threats, those can be um, victims because of how they lack the necessities and how bigger businesses, uh, Fortune 500s, they have the measures and it's a lot more difficult to penetrate and get to those uh, sites and get to those uh, organizations for the smaller businesses, it's, it's a lack of those resources in place. So it, it makes it a lot easier for them to go out there and uh, hack someone or compromise their data. So coming into your small business, you know, you don't want to lose your reputation or, you know, your continuity with the customers. You want to establish you know, a good working relationship. You want to have them trust you with your with their data. So you want to be able to secure from the beginning to the end, have these controls in place so that, you know, these customers feel like they can continue doing business with you and don't have to worry about their information being at risk. Um, there's also legal compliances that you have to follow. Uh, there's laws that, you know, depending on what uh, sector of business you're in, uh, you have to follow in terms of protecting users' information, could be health information, banking information, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. It is important to understand that some of these risks, um, they may apply to your business and you want to focus on that. 
uh, before we begin, um, we just want to take a look at like the perspective of a hacker. Um, hackers, pretty much uh, these malicious actors, they have different motives, they have different um, end goals, they have different um, ways of doing things. Uh, so a cyber breach may be different in terms of one from the other. They're not all the same. They, they all have different ways of strategizing or trying to find what it is they're looking for or produced. Uh, here are a few examples, you know, for some, the quickest and the, the most common are financial gain. You know, they're trying to exploit someone to get money out of them. They're doing these deceptive tactics, whether it be small scale, such as phishing, where, you know, they're asking for your information or if it's, you know, trying to get ransomware or it's it's trying to get some type of um, big funding from some cyber attack. Or another example is uh, data theft, you know, they're trying to steal information for uh, a specific reason. They're trying to uh, get into systems, get into uh, users' accounts, trying to get uh, data or you know, sensitive information that may suit whatever purpose they, they would like. Credential harvesting and uh, such identity thefts, things along that line. Uh, some of those things can be used to sell to other companies. Um, or sell on the black market where they're taking your information and they're selling it to others just uh, so they can use you for other purposes such as uh, companies for advertising, marketing, such and such. And then there's, there's those that do it just for fun. Like, hey, you know, uh, let's just do this because, you know, I, I think I can do this. This, is, this has all these exploitations and I want to see how good my skills are in being able to Hack. There may be no damages. There may be no um, no site or um, aspect of where anything was done. It may be invisible to you, but you know they just wanted to do it just because. All right. So this is what uh, we are going to go over today. Uh, so we're going to talk about what phishing is, uh, different types of phishing attacks, uh, flags to look out for when you're seeing some of these emails, uh, best practices. For your business to protect information when handling sensitive data and how to report phishing attacks. All right, so let's go over what phishing is. So phishing is a sort of cyber attack, a social engineering tactic where these uh, people that pretend to be someone that you trust, that you can, you know, share sensitive data with um, by fooling you into branding their site or whatever it is, their email to look legitimate and for you to feel comfortable or feel a certain emotion to share that information. So it can come in forms of uh, emails, websites, or text messages, phone calls. There are different um, tactics these individuals may pursue but uh, the purpose is to, for you to fall victim for, for them to disclose information. Um, it can lead to identity theft, uh, financial loss, data breach. Uh, it can compromise your accounts. It can, it can do so much to your uh, business. It can uh, affect not only yourself, but those who you are connected to as well. So phishing versus spam. So, Phishing, in a nutshell, it's a lot more targeted per se um, versus spam. We generally, most of us will get spam on a daily basis. Uh, we do have our uh, email providers, depending on which providers you use, they do have some sort of, some level of spam filtering where it's just uh, third party organizations or these uh, other companies that, try to get your attention to buy some product or it's just in bulk. They're just sending messages. Hey, try this. Hey, we have this offer. Hey, they're just promoting services for their businesses versus phishing. It's more targeted to use a deceptive scheme where it's like 
I've done my research a little bit. Okay, this is how I want people to fall victim. And it's not legitimate versus spam. Some may or may not be legitimate. Uh, some spam may be some sort of phishing, but for the most part, um, spam may just be uh, these uh, companies trying to advertise their products. Uh, so phishing, when it comes to phishing, this is a continuously growing crime, um, especially with the recent events over the past three or four years uh, where we dealt with uh, uh, the whole COVID um, shutdown where a lot of people were forced to go online for a lot of businesses, for a lot of um, communications, for a lot of things. Um, the increase in the use of uh, di the digital world, the uh, cell phones, um, Zoom meetings, uh, along that aspect, uh, it's the rise in that also created the rise in fishing. Whereas, you know, for fishing, you know, the, the easiest way for a hacker or someone to target you is instead of going through all of this hard work of trying to penetrate a system or writing a code to um, break down or find exploitations, vulnerabilities, the easiest way for them to do is just plain out ask, like, hey, what is your password? What is your account number? Like, that's the most straightforward way, you know, to get that type of information. So a lot of these businesses, um, there's attacks every day because there's a bulk of emails being sent out on a daily basis. And, you know, all it takes is for one time to slip up, you know, you're not paying attention to the uh, message or the content, or you're not sure of what you're doing. And, you know, these attacks can occur. So these, these attacks will continue to occur because they're seeing a lot of success rates. So, in order for us to combat that, we have to be more vigilant and we have to be more aware of these things that are happening out there. Uh, so with the strategy behind phishing, so it is a social engineering tactic basically to get into your psych, uh, to play with your emotions a little bit, uh, to have you feeling like you have to do something right away. Like the phishing, it's kind of like, hey, do this right now, or hey, you've won this, or there's several different ways for them to get this uh, emotion out of you. Uh, they want you to click on a link. Hey, click on this link. Uh, you want a prize or click on this link so you can update your account or download this attachment to see the provided information for a report or you know, just straight up saying your password has been um, locked out, can you please update it here? The tactics kind of fall in the line of the same. Uh, it's some sort of urgency or promotion or um, deceptive way they're trying to get you to reveal information. So we're gonna go over a few different uh, phishing attacks. Uh, so we have our email phishing and kind of broken down into several categories into getting more specific about what they are trying to accomplish. Uh, we have your voice phishing, which is phishing over the phone, um, phone calls. Uh, you have SMS phishing, which is through text message. And then you have also farming, uh, search engine phishing, waterhole phishing, which uh, can occur over the web. All right, so uh, email phishing is probably the most common. Uh, this is a pretty broad um, attack. So email phishing, you can consider, for instance, you're going out to fish, you're just trying to cast your line and anything you catch, you're happy with. So this is the same intention with uh, email phishing. You're creating these fraudulent emails, um, um, replicating trusted authorities, uh, banks, uh, your common sites that people would use, uh, Amazon. Um, they're trying to replicate these sites so that they can um, change around a few things, make it look legitimate, and then perceive a message where you have to do something along the lines of providing information or take some sort of action to download something where Malware, malware or any code injection may be involved. 
Um, they ask for usernames, passwords, uh, credit cards. Uh, a lot of that information is requested. Um, some of these hackers, uh, attackers are, English is not their first language. They may be from foreign countries. So there may be a lot of grammatical errors in their uh, messages. Um, so they want you to appear legitimate. And to, to, to pay a note in mind with phishing, it's not necessarily, if I send it to 10 people and if 10 people don't give me a response that I want, then I failed. No, it's if I send it to 10 people and if one or two persons fall for it, then to me, that is success. Then I can, it, it takes very little effort for them to do this kind of work to generate these messages. So if I send it to 10 people and I, I have one or two victims fall for it, that's a success. I move forward. I do 10 more. I it's, it's, it's a continuing thing. Just as fishing, you know, you're not going to catch all the fish out there, but you know, you, you pull in one or two, you know, that's considered, you know, good, good for you. So with phishing email, let's show an example of how one would go. So right off the bat, um, you're checking your emails. If you're not a Wells Fargo user, this may not alert you, but you know, if you are like banking with some company that they send an email or you've used some product of, you know, some company that you use, such as Amazon or PayPal or whatever it is they're trying to do, they try to broad range reach audiences that may work with these services. So with this one, we have uh, Wells Fargo. Um, they're telling you to update your account. Your account basically has to be verified. When with, with most new accounts, when you first set them up, you would have to do an email verification when you put your email on file for adding a new account. So once you get that link from the company, it verifies that, yes, I am the legitimate owner of this email account. And it ties that with the, the, the service or the company's account. And it lets it know that this person is this email's account and that that's sufficient. So what this person is trying to do is trying to trick you into thinking that you haven't done so. So they're, they're putting out a message saying that you haven't uh, verified your account and you need to do so. And with that, they provided a link in there. And if you can read, it says failure to verify will immediately lead to a temporary suspension of your account. So with that, they invoke a little fear into you. You know, not everyone may feel the same type of uh, anxiety or, well, you know, they're not aware of this kind of problem, they'd be like, oh my goodness, you know, if I don't do this now, I'll lose access to all my information, all my account. I need to do this now because, you know, I don't want to have to go through that trouble. So <clears throat> right away, they would click on this link. Now, this link right here would take them straight to the site that they want them to. If you're not aware, if you were to hover your mouse over this uh, link right here, it would give you the actual link that you are going to. It would give you, uh, due to this being an image, it won't be able to show, but it would show you uh, www.whateverwhatever.com. So you can edit this wellsfargo.com as any title as you want to. I can say whatever my homepage, my business page, I can say whatever it is I want this edited link to be. But if you actually hover over that link, that shows you exactly where you are going to go. Sometimes, even with links, if you click on something, there's uh, malware downloaded and such and such. Another thing to pay attention to is the to line, uh, the from line. My bad. Uh, okay, yeah, the from line, we have Wells verification, and then you have this email right here. Uh, so with that, it would not be... It would not you would not be able to change this to whatever you want it to be. This is whatever email they use, it will show up as is, whether it's a Gmail. So if it does not match wellsfargo.com or accounts.wellsfargo.com or whatever the trusted domain entity is, then right off the bat, that shows you that that's not who they say they are. They they can make little changes to where they misspell a few words. And if you just glance at it real quick, you might not notice, oh, it's missing an S or, oh, it's missing this. 
Um, so that's how they try to trick you into believing that this is a legitimate email. So there's a few key details that we'll go over later uh, to see what to look for in an email. So let's say you do click on this link. So now it takes you to this site. Now, as I mentioned um, here in this red square up top, this is the actual site that you are going to. Now, if you have hovered over that link, this would have showed that this is the site that you will be going to. So they've created this fake website and they did everything to copy and imitate what the real uh, Wells Fargo site is. And it's, it's not very complicated for a hacker to do this. Um, all websites provide some sort of source code that shows all the elements of your website on the web page. So they can just go and copy and just make a few alterations and there they have their website. So when you see this website, you're thinking, okay, well, I need to sign in. So you, everything looks correct. I need to sign in. So they start to put in their username, your, pa your password. And from there you move forward. Now they're requesting account identification information. Now, typical um, signing in or signing up for accounts when you haven't done certain uh, uh, requirements as such as verifying and stuff like that, this is a legitimate um, procedure uh, to, you know, when you first sign up, you put your email, you put your account information, you put all of that information. But with this person, they are creating these fields for you to enter it so that whenever you, whatever you type in, they're able to, when you forward the information, it goes to their side. So they're getting all your email address, your phone number, your your banking information, your card information, your PIN information, you're getting your social security, all of that information, just from you not noticing that this is not a legitimate website. So, so let's say you entered all the information that is displayed here and okay, you're thinking, yes, I've updated what I needed to. It takes you to this account identification site, basically saying you have done everything you needed, um, your account is restored. In actuality, nothing has actually happened. You just gave them the information they needed. And what they would do in some sort of um, way, they would make a landing page to route you back to the official website where you see in the green square, this is the official website. So when you get routed back to this website, you're able to log in, look at your actual account, look at everything. So you would think that you actually updated your information and everything is good to go. So there you'll log in and, and everything is normal, everything is fine, and you would not know that someone else has your information now. All right, spare phishing is another tactic um, along the lines of email phishing. Uh, spare phishing is more targeted to an organization or individuals uh, where they do a little bit more um, research on their um, targets, uh, maybe they, collect um, personal information from um, directories or they're able to gain information about uh, the individuals they are trying to target uh, by some way or form factor of um, their reconnaissance. So they try to impersonate people that you may know. They try to Im impersonate uh, trusted you know, individuals uh, this is a very probable and highly successful attack. Um, pretty much, if you think of spare fishing, you go with a spare gun and you see a target that you would like, and that's the one you're going for. So you're going to do extra research on how how can I catch this this fish? You know, what what uh, distance do I need to be at, or you know, certain factors that need to be in play. So same with uh, spare fishing, it's just you're focused on this target and you you try different um, tactics and techniques to, to reel them in. So here's an example of spare fishing. So this was along the lines of a university. Uh, so the person here is impersonating a staff member. Uh, they took their name. Uh, however, they received their name um, through a directory or, you know, whatever ways they were able to, you know, 
uh, received that information and they drafted an email basically saying, you know, hey, I have this piano, I'm not using it. Uh, does anyone want to use it? Just uh, let me know. And they've attached some pictures, you know. So you're thinking, hey, I know who that is. I know that person. Hey, these are, and the pictures are right there. Even if you don't know who they are, you're just probably going to wonder, hey, you know, maybe I like music. You know, it's just like, feel you feel innocent just to click on it, just saying, yeah, I can click on these, take a look at what they're trying to sell. But just by clicking on this image, um, you don't know who it's coming from. It can lead your uh, device to um, being compromised, uh, malware being downloaded or some sort of code injection um, where you're, you're vulnerable now. So from there, you can see the email, uh, the person name they are trying to impersonate it does not match on the top where it says K Simmons. So that is the actual email of the person. Like I mentioned, you can't, you can't edit or change this name. And they've included uh, other emails as well. So this is another example of uh, a way to get you to click on something. All right, and clone phishing, it's pretty much using uh, identical or um, pretty much using the exact same layout of a, a email or a web page and just changing up a few things and, and uh, adding links and attachments to it to try to get you to uh, fall victim for their attack. So as you can see, um, when you're shopping on Amazon, this is something you may or may not uh, receive in the past. Um, when you're, when you're ordering things, you know, you probably order quite a few things off of Amazon and, you know, let's say you get an email. Now it's saying that something did not go through. Maybe it, it used the wrong card. You're thinking to yourself, what happened? You know, I'm expecting this package. I ordered it a few days ago. Let me see if this is it. So you get this email saying that you need to update your information and, Right off the bat, this looks like something I've seen before. Um, maybe you've updated your card recently and you know you want to have this done. So another email here is a more so of a promotion. Um, it's showing you that for Black Friday, they have these deals, check out these discounted prices of these products, and it all looks so good. And you know, you're thinking around that time, like, hey, you know, what's the best deals I can find? And you know, this email pops up and I'm like, okay, hey, let me check this out. This looks really, really good. And it looks like it's from Amazon. So Amazon has some good deals on whatever it is they're selling. I'm going to click on it. But if you haven't paid attention to the email up top where it says uh, Amazon shop, that email right there can show you. It says apponline.info. It does not say amazon.com. So they cannot edit that domain name unless you are an authorize account under amazon.com for them to have an actual email. You cannot uh, edit or change that in any way. All right. Okay, yeah. So this is an example of clone phishing. Uh, it just pretty much replicates uh, the exact layout layout of how an uh, legitimate email would look. Uh, whaling more so refers to high profile um, targets uh, such as CEO, presidents, uh, top executives. Uh, so what it is, it can look from the top down. Um, they can impersonate uh, the CEO as a CEO telling um, uh, workers, uh, employees, you know, I am the CEO, I need this done, I need that done. And you're fair of being uh, in some sort of repercussion if you don't do what they say, um, we'll have you doing it right away. If the president asks for this, you know, I have to do it, you know, I, I may lose my job, you know, it's it's that sort of fair they're trying to strike into you. So with this one, it's like spare fishing, it's a lot more research, um, especially being uh, high value, high profile, victim they'll have to find more ways to impersonate or try to find some way to get access to or 
look like they are that person. So they have to have a good business language understanding because of, you know, the level of character they're using. And here's an example of a whaling email. Uh, it's, it's sort of represented as a president of a university. Um, it wants you to click on this PDF file. And as you can see from the top, it shows you the actual email it comes from. And in the message, it's just, you know, requesting information and this, and you would want to believe that it's something legitimate, something that you can trust. And it's the president's asking for it. That's his name and whatnot. And if you're not aware, you'll click on it to see what he's talking about. Uh, business comp email compromise, that more so is saying a business was compromised. So let's say an, a hacker was able to get someone's uh, credentials or uh, they were able to find some way to impersonate someone and reach out as them on a business standpoint uh, where let's say they, the person goes on vacation and they're impersonating this person saying, hey, you know, I'm on vacation. Um, I've lost access to all my my account information, my funds, and I'm I'm stuck. I'm not able to do anything. Can you update my account information, wire money, or do a payment, or you know, play as an IT personnel saying, hey, I need to get in. So they'll try to do it from a business standpoint where they're playing the role as these uh, HR or whatever um, business personnel to try to make you feel like, hey, you know, HR or um, IT or accounting may be sending you an email within the department and then you wouldn't have questions to believe it or not. Um, so sometimes it's always good to be skeptical and, and verify the emails that you receive regardless of where it comes from, internal, external, based on the requests. Um, if it's something, you know, out of the ordinary, you might want to double check and you know verify that that person is who they say they are and is asking for what they are asking for. Uh, Phone-based phishing, you have your voice phishing, um, pretty much your telephone scams. You know they're calling, impersonating these companies. Um, they want they want you to do some sort of fashion of giving information. Um, by social security or provide account details or provide you to uh, ask, request you to go to this site. Um, they can impersonate, uh, let's say IT department saying, hey, I need, I need to get access to this uh, webpage. Um, I can't get access, this link is not working for me. And then you, know, you as an IT person, um, they, you click on the link, not knowing that they're redirecting you to the malicious link and then you fall victim to it or whoever you may be, you know, they're, they're calling about trying to find a way to get you to do some sort of action in terms of revealing information. Uh, same with the text messages, uh, it goes along the lines with the email, they're sending you these texts, um, they're altering their phone numbers as so as some of the voice uh, vision, they can change it to who they want it to appear to be, may not be um, a legitimate um, phone number. Um, they can spoof that. So what they do is they just send these messages and it, uh, hope for you to click on a link or some sort. And here's an example of uh, SMS phishing. Uh, sometimes uh, you get alerts from your phone like UPS or you may get uh, different companies um, sending you message notifications, updating you on things that are happening, uh, promotions, stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of the times these uh, messages are generated from like, um, it's non-user created, uh, it's, it's machine generated messages um, to send out these promotions or these tracking information. Sometimes it's even uh, Apple, the hackers are looking for your Apple information where they're sending these alerts saying that you need to 
to update your account information or you have a uh, important update with their Apple that needs to be done just to click on this link. So here you see uh, all these examples uh, replicate similar to phishing emails. Uh, so these other examples more so are over the web. Um, they more so apply depending on what type of systems and services you're running. Um, you may or may not be involved with the control of these things. Uh, farming involves DNS, which DNS is just um, translating the IP addresses of the, the sites you're visiting or the sites that you are using, the devices into names that we uh, as humans can recognize. So what uh, farming does, it's they, they interject and go in between what is a DNS server and they take whatever uh, file that holds the DNS information where all the DNS to IP address, the names to the IP, they may alter that saying www.amazon.com goes to this IP address, which is the actual IP address. But instead they go in there into the DNS system and they say amazon.com goes to my fake website now. So now instead of going to the real amazon.com, you're going to the fake website. So what it does is just interject um, in between. So this more so falls on the DNS level. Uh, sometimes it may be the site that you're visiting there, they may be at compromise and not, it may not be your device, but there's also a chance if they get access to like your personal device, your personal computer, there are files on there that they can edit, uh, trusted host files that your computer stores that lets you know, okay, this is the IP address for this site name. So those are things that you, you can be aware of. Um, those are things that are hard even for uh, security experts to depict because these uh, attackers are so clever with their tactics. So they try to bypass any uh, detection any way they can. Uh, search engine phishing, it's manipulating. Um, if you go to a search engine and you uh, pretty much do a search, uh, the top hits on the top usually generate the most um, traffic. So what they do is they find some way to um, alter that into putting their fake website on top. Uh, you might search for how to, how to save this information or how to do this. And they may put they may look at like uh, something that, you know, generates a lot of traffic and they would put that to the top in their injection or whatever link they have set. And water hole, watering hole is pretty much finding a site where a lot of people frequently visit. And this one is more so on the, the site hosting the, the, the webpage and they would pretty much find a compromise on that site where everyone comes to this site and they would add like something, a link in there saying to click on this or download this in which you don't know if this is legitimate. It can be something um, innocent. Uh, it can be, you know, providing daily information. Uh, let's say quote of the day, like, you go on a website and it, it has these quotes of the day and this was actually a real attack that happened uh, with Forbes uh, where it's you click on the link and it downloads uh, malware automatically and you're thinking this site you go on it it's it's a very uh, notorious site it's supposed to be trusted and they were able to compromise this site and you click on this link now you're uh, vulnerable all right, so we're gonna go with some flags uh, when you detect in your email. So these are some things that you may look at from top to bottom. First thing you wanna look at is your from line. You always wanna verify in your from, from line, you wanna make sure you know who that person is. And if you're getting an email, uh, depending on what sort of business, you may or may not uh, know all your uh, 
clients or all your stakeholders or you may come in contact with. So you want to verify, you know, the person who they say they are uh, in terms of the actual email. Um, you would want to verify that the, the matching email matches the person's name. They may have some fake name and then another email attached to that. So you want to look at the from line. Are you expecting something from this someone? Um, is this something out of the ordinary? There's a lot of things to investigate. You also want to look at the date. Uh, some of the times that these occur, like you're receiving emails at two in the morning to update your account or, you know, something that seems very suspicious. Uh, the two line. Uh, a lot of times with the emails, uh, some of the phishing attempts would, would uh, blank out that line. So they don't see that it's a mass email being sent out. Uh, sometimes it may include a few or it may just include yourself, but uh, pay attention to the, the two line. Uh, the subject line is something of um, huge importance too. Um, you can see directly what they're asking for. If there's any tone of um, urgency or any tone of like request to do something or uh, receive some type of award. From there, you can look and see, okay, well, that's a flag. You know, let me now look at the content of the message to see what it aligns with. Um, maybe it is something important that I need to pay attention to, but you want to verify through the content of the message, look at the body of the message, uh, see, see what it is they're requesting. As you can see here, they're requesting financial report <clears throat> um, for employees and such. And this, if this is not something common or if this is not someone you spoke to before, if this is just something out of the ordinary, then you would definitely look at this as something suspicious. Um, always, always, always look at the hyperlinks. You can hover over them. You can take your mouse and you don't have to click anything. Just place it right on top of the hyperlinks and it'll tell you exact, exactly what it is. Um, one of my um, safest ways I think that you should do it is if you get a hyperlink from uh, some company or whatever they say they are, if they have the, the hyperlink typed, you can go to Google or whatever search engine. Don't type it exactly into the, the the bar on top where the where you put in the website you use a search engine where you can type it in you may type in amazon or whatever it is they're requesting go to that actual website if your bank is telling you something you go to your official bank's website you sign in from there you want to check from there go go on the website itself versus taking a shortcut and clicking on the link as well as the attachments make sure that it's someone that you you trust, um, make sure it's something that you are expecting and it's not none out of the ordinary. Uh, so here are some of the red flags to look out for. Uh, they want you to do some sort of action. They want you to, hey, click on this or hey, do this immediately or else your account will be suspended or this is a, a step needed to do this. You always wanna verify the urgency in that message if it's something legitimate, um, they also, old threats telling you to do this now or this will happen, uh, your account will get suspended. Um, some may be uh, requests, whereas like they're offering you a job or they're offering to pay you for some sort of service or they're requesting information, your financial information. Then you have some that offer uh, rewards or money saying that you won this prize, click on this or do this. And then you have also others where uh, you confirm some product that you ordered, which you never did, or track this information for this order or however that may work. And then you have the fake security alerts and the updates where it's like, you know, you need to update your, your Apple, your iOS, or your, your Microsoft, uh, or your accounts have been locked. So these are different um, tactics they would use in their messages especially in the subject header uh, to try to trick you. Uh, so here's some do's and don'ts. Uh, so you want to confirm if you receive a phone call, uh, the caller or the sender's identity, uh, especially if it's um, 
someone you haven't done business with before, someone you haven't spoken with before, or you always want to verify that the person is who they say they are. Uh, it's not necessarily an easy task to do. Um, we do um, come as small businesses come in communication with uh, a lot of um, different uh, entities, uh, whether it be stakeholders, clients, such and such. Um, but uh, you would always want to confirm and see the validity, especially with what uh, the caller is pursuing. Um, so refrain from sharing um, confidential information until you're 100 percent sure that this is someone that you can trust uh, someone that is legitimate um <clears throat> don't share any uh sensitive information via email those are things that can uh those are things that can be uh if you're using a like a network sniffer or these hackers they can use even if you know they're not the one asking for it uh if you're sending it to someone you know they can uh, there are ways if they're able to um, be able to track the data that's going across. If it's not secure, they can see that. But for the most part, most companies, reputable companies, would never ask. Um, you would see a little disclaimer on the bottom saying that they would never ask to send your information over email. So um, that's something to be mindful of. If you have email um, passwords or anything like that, don't do it via email it would normally generate a link that you can click on, which you want to verify that it's the actual, say for instance, you forgot your password, you would, they would send you a link saying, hey, yes, can you reset your password, click on this link, make sure it's something that you requested. And when you request, it would be very, very, very rare, very rare that a hacker can send you the same exact um, request to reset a password at the same time you request for it. So you want to verify when you get that link to reset your password that it sends you to a website and you look at the the hyperlink on top make sure it says https that it's secure it's not um it's the actual website itself the domain name whatever whatever dot com dot org dot gov um uh stay alert with your emails um that you provide through forms don't just uh enter information unknowingly um, pay attention to the from and reply to headers. They can um, manipulate these. If you can see, they can just uh, alter the, the, the text uh, to something. If you just glance at something, which I'm a victim of sometimes myself, you glance and, okay, that looks correct, you know, but you're not seeing that it has an extra S at the end or it has a, a L missing in the no reply at ups.com. So, they do these things just so if you have one day where you, you don't take this extra step to see it, then you'll miss it. Um, so never open any links. As I mentioned before, always visit the legitimate website by typing in the correct link in your web browser. Uh, don't fall for the urgent or the free reward messages. Um, verify the websites that you're visiting, especially with the web web um phishing attacks make sure that they have the trusted um certificate uh they would show a lock bar on top where you type in the www dot whatever whatever uh make sure that that says https that means your information will be secure and always 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 exercise caution and rely on your intuition uh so some things that you can look into for protecting your business in terms of sensitive information um is important to emphasize strong passwords. Strong passwords uh, make it harder for you, harder for hackers to breach your systems. Um, enforcing a password policy where you know you change your password after a certain amount of times, especially for systems that um, control sensitive data, um, you want to have that updated frequently. You know, all it takes is for a hacker to to find um, the hash code for that. And then they're able to start working on breaking that down. Um, the, sh the longer the characters, the variance of uh, uppercase, lowercase, alphanumeric numbers, the harder it is for them to get it. The longer the password, the better. I understand trying to remember these passwords are quite a pain, but it saves you in the end. 
uh, two-factor authentication. It's a lot of businesses are using that and that should be something that you should look into. Um, basically, even if the hacker was able to get your password, they won't be able to get in because they have to send you, they have to send a message to your phone, which you have receipt of, or our, whatever two-factor authentication you go with, um, whether it's um, biometrics or something you have, something you are, something you own, something like that. Um, keep your systems updated, um, conduct backups, make sure that your sensitive data is um, backed up somewhere safe, um, your system, make sure that they're getting all the updates they're needed, um, and spam filtering, which a lot of uh, emails, they do some level of spam filtering. You can boost that, but um, also there is somewhere you can get false negatives if you put it too high, but you know, in the end with security, you want to be able to filter out all the bad things but at the same time, you may or may not, depending on how strong the security is set, may lose out on legitimate emails because of how strong the spam filtering is working. But in the end, with the spam filter, they would look for um, a lot of things in terms of versus is it internal? Is it an inter internal email coming from your organization's email, or is it external? Is it a person you know? Is it a subject that sounds risky? It will look for all of those things. Um, conduct training sessions. Uh, that is very important, especially for businesses. You want to educate all your employees. You want to educate uh, your uh, business partners, everyone that uh, even the clients, you know, using these things, they want to be safe and secure. So you want to practice healthy habits of, you know, not leaving your password written down on top of your computer or you know, a lot of things are creating um, strong passwords. You want to make sure that you have all of that, those healthy habits um, reproduced throughout your business. Uh, and also just pay attention to the trends that, and the news that's going on with phishing and and all the, the updates that, because um, this is an ongoing and everyday battle um, for phishing. There are so many new exploits that happen so often that you know we have to constantly update systems we have to constantly that's why they're always updating patches with your systems and things like that because these hackers are finding loopholes exploitations so uh it's good to you know take note you don't have to do that every day but you know once in a while make sure that your systems that are protecting information um that you're staying up to date with what needs to um stay protected uh, and then i would say as starting out as small businesses, uh, there are frameworks out there that you can use um, that helps to provide guideline and procedures and steps for you to have a secure business. NIST, N-I-S-T, that is an example of one. They provide frameworks where they have written documentations of steps and procedures that you can do to protect your information. Um, you have a lot of others that you can use. Um, ISO 27001 is another one. Um, CIS, there, there are quite a few um, frameworks out there that you can investigate and see what works for your business. Um, I wouldn't say it's an easy task, but it would make your, your business a lot more secure. And when you get phishing, attempts. Uh, if you see any that you notice, you can forward it to this email, uh, report phishing at APWG, Anti-Phishing Work Group. It's under the Federal Trade Commission. So this is a way that you can report any online phishing that you receive from your business. Uh, it not only helps yourself, but you know it helps others as well. When you or feel like you've been vulnerable, don't wait till it's too late. Um, don't wait and not let anyone know, especially your customers or your business partners. You want to let them know that you know. Well, you know, I've been involved in a phishing attack, and that you know, I think my system or this may have been compromised. You would want to let people know as early as possible and disconnect the devices that were connected from the network. Make sure to have them scanned and cleaned and and checked out before you bring them back online. So when you receive a phishing email, 
you want to delete it and hit report. All right, and that concludes. So what we went over, it's pretty much phishing is a tactic used on a daily basis to send these malicious emails that appear to be legitimate. Um, they want you to click on these links, download these attachments. They they want to try to trick you into doing things. Um, it can cause serious uh, repercussions in terms of financial loss, data breaches, reputation damage, legal implications. So always, always be thorough in your emails. Um, take a look at your emails line by line. Uh, don't don't be quick to click on any links or do anything until you you validate and verify and also find ways to fortify your business, uh, conduct training, um, uh, try to improve your, your accounts, make sure they stay protected, especially those uh, that has sensitive data, whether you know it's, it's banking information or it's health information, whatever it is, um, and find some way where you can get a guideline that helps you to know what line of work you're in, what, what is the proper way for you to handle sensitive data these policies, these um, these written works. And here are some resources that you can use uh, to help you with your small business if um, you, know, you have any issues or you wanna learn more about uh, phishing awareness. Uh, there's also uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month in October. That's a good time where there's a lot of webinars and a lot of resources that are out there uh sans institute uh, it's a very renowned um cybersecurity uh institute My, myself i attended quite a few courses with them um they're very profound and you have the cisa they provide a lot of um, guidelines and resources as well as well as the federal trade commission all right and that will be all and i thank you guys for your time um, I'll pass it to Sharika. Any questions? Okay, so thank you, Robbie. Anyone that has a question, you can go ahead and place it directly in the chat, and then we can get it addressed as soon as possible. So in the interim, I'll go ahead and let everyone know that the VI SBDC has so much more in store for USVI small businesses. You can visit our website at www.visbdc.org. Download the VISBDC app on your mobile device from the appropriate app store. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Business, and you can subscribe to the VISBDC YouTube channel for new up uploads of our on-demand webinars. A few workshops and webinars that we have coming up. Tomorrow in person on St. Thomas, we have Shopify, Building Your Website for Success. On February 6th, we have VBAC, Understanding Markets and Your Competitive Space. On the 9th, we have Manager's Guide to Restaurant Financial Reports. On the 13th, we have VBAC, back again with the Economics of Small Business Startup. On St. Croix in person, on February 20th, we have New Year New Businesses, SBA Resources Every Small Business Should Know. On the 22nd, we have Electronic Payment Processes for U.S. Small Businesses. On the 26th on St. Croix in person, we have securing an SBA loan for your business, how to get approved. And on the 29th, we have a webinar territory-wide and that would be the IRB presenting on tax basics for small businesses. So we do have a jam-packed training calendar and we encourage you to register and attend those um, sessions. I don't see any questions, Robbie. So you've done a phenomenal job in explaining that information to us and everyone present, this webinar will be converted into the on-demand um, version. So you can go back and watch at your leisure. So on behalf of the entire VISBDC network, we thank you VIITS for presenting this information to us and putting on this entire um, cybersecurity awareness series in collaboration with us. To everyone in attendance, thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.